Hey everybody, welcome back to Is It A Buy, where we discuss stocks and determine if they are worth a buy or maybe a pass. My name is Corey. I'd just like to preface the video by saying I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about stocks, so please take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, let's get into the video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about BlackBerry. So if you're like me, uh, you've been seeing all this you know, GameStop stuff and AMC, we know what they do. Even Nokia, we know that they're doing the 5G. But... I still didn't know what BlackBerry was doing. I kind of knew what they were doing a little bit, um, but I I didn't really understand it. Um, and as I was doing this research for this video, I learned that it is uh, a lot. It's very hard to like kind of understand. I'm try I'm gonna try to break it down as best as I can, but just know it's it's like pretty complex. So if I dumped it down too far, um, just please or or not far enough. Uh, let me know and, and maybe I can do another video, but I, I think uh, I, I got it nailed pretty pretty well, okay? So let's take a look. So uh, let's let's just kind of jump right into to what they've been working on. They've been working on uh, a, well, I, I should say they haven't been working on this system, but they, they purchased the system uh, in, in 2010. It's called the, the QNX system. And so it's basically an operating system and it's, uh, just to read the definition here, QNX is a commercial Unix-like real-time operating system aimed at primarily, aimed primarily at the embedded systems market. Okay, so it's an operating system um, in, in the embedded systems market, and we'll kind of get into that part. Uh, and so they also have another uh, another uh, piece called uh, BlackBerry Ivy. And so essentially, what Ivy is is an intelligent vehicle data platform. And so it's like, okay, well, what, what does this do? This is essentially, if you've ever used, done any kind of development or anything like that, uh, you know how, how things are basically, or maybe you've heard the term open source. There are things that are open source. This way, they kind of put the code out there or, or uh, whatever information they can out there. And then developers can come and kind of create their own apps uh, and uh, different kind of systems and stuff. So it's it's so cool what they're able to do with this because they've they're basically them and and Amazon as we know they they do have a partnership with Amazon them and Amazon they're basically creating this very base model of a of a of a platform where people can go in and build their own applications with the with the car and I, I know you're probably thinking okay apps like cool like I don't I don't need like Spotify or anything like this. This is the, these apps are much much more um, advanced uh, to the point where they connect with your like vehicle sensors um, and they can really and the sensors alone. I mean that says a whole lot of what they can do. You know I I know I like the feature like whenever your tire pressure is low. Oh you can see that. But these guys are gonna are gonna be able to go much much deeper into what they can do uh, with with the systems. Okay. So um, taking a look here, let's see. So just um, to go directly to the consumer side, excuse me, uh, you can see they have personalized in-car experiences, more frequent feature updates, and more data protection and privacy, uh, which this leads me into the, the next um, vertical that they're in. They're an AI uh, and predictive security AI for that. So Everyone has, you know, or maybe you, you have some kind of antivirus on your phone. It kind of just says, oh, we found a virus and, and it kind of quarantines it or whatever. So these guys are <laughs> much, much more advanced than that. We're talking like vehicle AI, full system AI, like true security. Kind of, this is a terrible example, but just follow me here. Imagine if, if Ultron was good like he was supposed to be and he he really put a layer of protection on the world this is what these guys are are, are basically creating and the scale of it especially being with amazon they're really going to be able to scale this and have everything under one roof where to the point where i i, I would not be surprised if in you know however many years we saw security by blackberry or security by like ivy or something like that because that's how impressive their 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 systems are and from my understanding uh from, from all the research i've done their their system is well actually this this part will speak to itself here's what they're protecting automotive software robotics and automation 
medical devices, rail transport, commercial vehicle service, heavy uh, commercial vehicles, heavy machinery, industrial controls, aerospace and defense. These are not things that you're like, oh, like we had a little bug and um, it's okay, we, we can just fix it later. No, 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 no. These are like literal life or death um, services. Th these are not play around services. And for people to be trusting BlackBerry with their software and their, their lives and stuff, you have to keep in mind, let's say, um, I'm not sure if they use them, but let's say uh, uh, General Motors, let's say they use their software and it, it craps out or something and, and causes a bad crash or they're like a huge recall, that's not gonna fly. People are not gonna accept that kind of uh, service. So like these guys have to be on top of it. And if they're not on top of it, it's gonna ruin their whole business, their whole credibility. I mean, frankly, I'm sure most of us were like, didn't even know they were still a business. We knew they made phones, you know, a million years ago, but we didn't even know that they were still around. Turns out they basically put their head down, or I should say, it seems like they went into the commercial sector and just have been kind of marketing, advertising towards them and, and creating their solutions. And as you can see, these guys have gotten very far, um, further than I would have even, would have ever guessed. I mean, it's so impressive what, what they've been doing kind of uh, on the commercial side. So uh, I, one more thing I saw is um, to kind of get in the numbers a little bit here. So, uh, you know, the growth for, for QNX. So the adoption. So look at their like profits, like with the money that this QNX system has been uh, uh, bringing in, like it has scaled significantly. And um, by the way, this is a, a post. I'll, I'll have this in the description. It's a, basically a full comprehensive guide about uh, BlackBerry. I didn't really take much from this, um, but it's obviously someone put a lot of uh, work into it. So um, I'm, I'm gonna link this even though I'm, I'm just kind of using this section. Uh, so as you can see, these guys are like, not these guys aren't messing around. These guys are really here and they're here to stay. Um, let's take a look a little bit about the the back end of things like the financials and and uh, let's let's kind of get into uh, that a little bit. So um, as you know, I, I like to look at the uh, one year target estimates, and um, and again, I take this with a big grain of salt. They're really not that accurate, but I'm sure there's some kind of algorithm or some some analyst who c comes up with these numbers, and I just like to see where people are at. So taking a look at this, um, their one year target estimate is seven dollars and sixty nine cents. Again, you know, taking it for what it is. That's, uh, that's that's what they're estimating. Um, taking a look over here, I do see that they have, uh, just to get another price target, looks like uh, Market Watch has them at a high. I like to look at the high. Um, well, I guess we can look at all of them though, but uh, of $20. So that's a pretty big discrepancy. I mean, maybe if it's the, the median, it's, it's a little bit closer, uh, or maybe even the average, you know, it's closer to what Yahoo Finance has, but, Still, um, something to take with a grain of salt, just to see what's going on. Um, let's look at the institutional ownership. Institutional ownership tells me a lot about a company uh, because big money doesn't play with their, their big money. These guys are in it to make money and that's it. They, they don't like, they're not gamblers. So taking a look, they have 392 institutional owners, which is a, a lot. Um, and to the point where that is 60.91% of institutional ownership. That is a lot of people putting their, their you know, money in this company and, and believing in it to grow, okay? And so if you look at the, the Black Bear institutional holdings, I, I do try to get at least two different numbers. Um, I try to get more, but man, it's hard to find uh, resources with, with all of these uh, the, these numbers in them, it's, it's just a little tricky, but uh, here you can see 42.59. So a bit of a discrepancy here, but you know, let's say it's just the, the, the 42.59 or maybe even a little bit less. That's still a good portion of, of big money that that's in here. You know, th those guys aren't dumb. They, this is like what they do. So, so I, I put a little weight in that. Something coming up. So I, I think we caught this at a good time because BlackBerry, their earnings announcement 
So, so the, March 30th is when they're going to announce their earnings. Um, and right, so right now we have a good amount of time to get in before they start um, to to kind of uh, I would say get a little more volatile. Uh, typically, whenever earnings are coming out, the the stock goes up or down. Um, in my experience, I, I think I would say up more often, just because it's just in anticipation of the the earnings report in case it's like stellar. Another thing here, let's see, Internet of Things. This is kind of talking about how how they're allowing developers to um to kind of jump in with their technology and, and kind of connect to it. Let's take a look at uh, Weeble and let's let's take a look at the chart setup right now. So this chart setup right here is over a five day period. And you can kind of see how they they had a little run up here and then they kind of fell down. This is around where the bear market was. So it, it just kind of messed with everything, especially tech. So uh, definitely something to keep that uh, keep in mind. But, you know, looking over here, it does look like it's starting to squeeze down. So as you can see here, let's go ahead and, and, and get in here a little bit closer. Uh, let me grab this trend line here and we can grab it. I might actually just grab it from right here. And you can see that uh, it was kind of trending down and it kind of pushed above this uh, descending level of, of resistance. And uh, what I like here is how it kind of consolidated. So you can see how it looks like it found a bottom. And I can put a tr uh, trend line here. And it looks like it's respecting this level of resistance. And as long as it continues to respect that, that's excellent. That's what we want to see, uh, especially with this um, earnings report coming up. This is this is very good. And what we're going to want to see is for it to just hold that level of support. As long as it holds that level of support, uh, we could definitely see some good things. Um, another thing we're looking for is uh, let's take a look at a, a few of the indicators on the screen. We do have the RSI, RSI being the relative strength index. Uh, anything over 70 is overbought, anything under 30 is oversold. And so what we're seeing here is it's hovering a little above the middle right here, um, which is just fine. So um, let, let's take a look at some other indicators that we have. We do have the 200 EMA. So that's this purple line here, 200 EMA being the 200 day exponential moving average, which is basically just a, the moving average over 200 days. Then we do have the blue line, which is the 15 MA. So the 15 MA being the moving average for 15 days. As you can see here, uh, it looks like what, what you want to look for is you want to see the uh, 15 MA cross over the 200 EMA. Once you do that, once you see that, you it will typically uh, be a sign of a uh, uh, upcoming bullish run, and that's what we want to see. As you can see here, it almost uh, passed that. If it would have looked, if it would have crossed that, we may have seen a bullish run there. Um, but uh, sometimes it does cross over and go back down, so it's it's not an exact science, but it, it usually is a pretty good indicator. Uh, so right here, what we're looking at is it kind of is, is squeezing down um, and I'm going to be looking for a breakout. Um, it looks like it did uh, break out around here. Keep in mind, this is the after hours, so it's a little bit tricky to see exactly what's going on. Um, doesn't just because the volume is a, is a little light typically. So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen during this next day uh, with the market being open of how this this is going to break out. Let's take a look at their financials and see what we have going on over here so their financials for let's go ahead and, and go back a little let's go to their fiscal q1 and it looks like their gross profit was 143 million uh q2 and this that was during uh the pandemic uh too so that that was pretty good for them um their q2 gross profit 199 million so it skyrocketed from there uh, Q3 right now has actually gone down. It went from 199 million to 149 million. So, uh, you know, it did go down a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. I mean, it does look like that they've been putting a little bit of, of more money in, in other places. Uh, it looks like their uh, cost of revenue went up as well as their marketing and administra administrative expenses. So, Seeing this, I'm I'm really hoping that they're it was mostly like maybe in the marketing um, for for advertising to uh, B two B you know business to business and, and trying to get more people um, and maybe administrative expenses for for hiring more people but I really can't you know speculate as to what that's really for. Now as for what I'm hoping this is telling us though 
because it looks like they are reinvesting into their business is that they they're they're really trying to grow they're looking to kind of get everything all their ducks in a row and then they're just going to launch and they're going to they're going to skyrocket that partnership with amazon they had a little spike during that but they did not but they're they're not at market yet they're still like working on the details and they're gonna have to implement the system so that's gonna take a while and whenever that finally hits you're gonna see a run on this for sure because everybody's pro everybody wins in that everybody wins and it's gonna be so big um let's see going back to the the chart here um as far as an entry point i i feel like I like this entry point. I feel like ten dollars is a great price for this stock. Um, I really don't see it, see it going any lower. Um, now, as far as a play goes, this is a longer play. This is not a an AMC short squeeze. This is not a GameStop squeeze. This is this is none of that. This is a real company with very very good financials and a very very good product these guys weren't on the on the verge of bankruptcy like those two companies were these guys were have been working very hard with their head down behind the scenes or i guess more in the commercial sector and these guys have been really pushing their their products pushing what they do that's what I have for you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. If you did like it or you have any questions, you want to talk about anything, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you did like the video, please consider hitting that like button or even subscribing. I have some great content coming out. Uh, very soon I should be uh, releasing uh, a few stocks that I feel like have crazy upside potential. I'm talking like 500 times uh, profit. No one seems to be talking about these stocks. Um, I, I'm not sure why, but in my eyes, they're extremely safe bets, and and you you can't go wrong. So you probably you're probably gonna want to stick around for those. Um, if uh, and if you if you're bullish on BlackBerry, you know maybe consider sharing this video. Let people know what they do. It's kind of you know tricky to explain what they do, but people I'm sure would love to know what these guys are doing and would love to kind of understand what they're doing. And once they understand, I think they'll see that there's a lot of upside on this stock. So so please consider uh, sharing the video. All right. Hey, thanks so, so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace.